All right, Hardy Honours, a uh, little bit of a cheeky bonus episode with uh, King of the Jungle as the co-host, no Delby. So, actually, there's a bit of a similar look. We've got the same sort of tan line. <laughs> um, uh, and before we get to our guest that we have on today, uh, we are brought to you today by, as you can see behind our guest, Kirby there, uh, alltradescover.com.au. All Trades Cover, they are an insurance company. They give you all your uh, insurance needs when it comes to trades. Big business, small business. Um, this is normally where Delby squirms his ass off because he tries to give an example that won't legally get them in trouble. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> but um, we won't give an example. But, you know, they can help you with, uh, I guess, a bit of liability and stuff. Anything that's going to go wrong on a site, uh, uh, they're going to help you with. So alltradescover.com.au. This episode's also brought to you by Vibe Culture. Vibe Culture is a supplement... Um, Good for hangovers, okay, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah you probably could have used it out on the Survivor, <laughs> yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, it's not only good for um, hangovers, it's good for uh, just a pick-me-up. It's a bit like a, it's almost like a morning coffee. It's got a bit of caffeine in it, a little bit of caffeine in it, but it's got uh, your, your nutrients, uh, essential vitamins. It's got uh, a few amino acids and it's just bloody good. Just have a glow get, after it. Yeah, it gets yeah. you buzzing a little <laughs> bit. It's actually good because I, I noticed uh, when I stopped having it because I ran out, uh, I noticed the difference okay. between having it in the morning and not having it. So that's obviously a good little wrap yeah, for it. Yeah. That's not even me talking shit when about it. When someone a goes, have you taken your... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, you, look, you look like, like shit. You are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and this episode's also brought to you by uh, Kahuna Golf. Kahuna Golf, where's our hat there? Uh, they've got the best apparel, best attire in the game. Look good, feel good, play good. Can you play golf? Uh, no, I'm pretty. I'm an all rounder. Pretty good at everything. Yeah, no, no, nah, nah, I'm shit at golf. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, at least you'll look good if you're wearing uh, <laughs> Kahuna, Kahuna Golf. Uh, they've got a discount code, uh, which is Hardy Arms 15. You get 15% off all their apparel. So go on to their website. They've got a new retro range coming out soon as well. So get around them. They've been great sponsors and their uh, owner is a fucking legend. So, uh, And if you're Delby, you, at least you look good because um, he <laughs> doesn't play good. <laughs> um, but uh, you know what, Luke? I'm going to let you introduce our guest and ask her what we talked about today. Okay, Curbs. Thanks for flying in. Yep, what flying. Are we, what are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> we talked about connecting, we talked about sport, mm-hmm. life, hard yarns mm. and survivor and what that all looks like in just in you know, everyday life. Man, that is a great summation. You've done very well. Yeah, Efficient, yeah, that yeah. was good. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, we got a lot deeper than I thought. I thought we were just going to talk survivor, but talked a bit of mm. mental health, a bit of your past and, and yeah. um, getting through some uh, some struggles. So yeah, bloody yeah. good. And then, you know what, always great to be joined by the King of the Jungle as well. Always, it's always good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah but a yeah. uh, little last minute episode, bonus nice. episode for the week, so I hope you enjoy it. We've got another episode tomorrow as well, so. Thanks, Branch. Sick. Awesome. Let, Legend. Let's get hard. Let's get hard. Okay, I'm <laughs> I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Delby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get home. <laughs> cool, check, check, check. All right. Uh, yeah, sweet. Fuck yeah. Sweet. We're on. How bloody good. Uh, okay. Look, you're my co host today. <laughs> <laughs> King of the Jungle. Dude. <laughs> what? You uh, tell me you look different. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit better looking now. Nah. <laughs> nah th- thanks, uh, to Branchy. We This is full short notice. Yeah, yeah. A quick little. Made uh, it happen. I don't mind it. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> These are good, these ones. So yeah. uh, maybe you can introduce, introduce our guest today, mate. Okay, all right. Well, listen, we have uh, one of the greatest uh, Survivor players that has now just joined the Australian franchise, really. Um, second, just sec- second grade, would you say oh, second, second, second greatest? Second greatest. <laughs> second greatest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just trying to give her flowers. <laughs> uh, she's just come off the latest season. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she reached out to me just lately. We actually have a relationship before. No, I, before even knowing you went on the show. So she's just come off the fresh off the show mm. and she's uh, now based in Melbourne. 
legit flown in for this. Yeah, that's that's sick. <laughs> and she flies out tonight. <laughs> that's, you know? that's so good because so, I, ne- I nearly cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Sorry, actually, we can't do it. No. <laughs> Imagine that. You'd God. be like, "Fuck you." No, uh, no, of we'd have to record off the phone. But yeah, Kirby Bentley, Kirby mm. Bloody Bentley, Ew. what's going on? Yeah, no, thanks for having me too. Uh, <laughs> King of the Jungle. I've not watched an episode or a season before mine, so I'm, yeah, yeah. Mate, learning on fucking, the go. Mate, I, I still haven't watched it. <laughs> so, but, uh, like, I've had mates on um, and, like, even uh, Luke, we went on again, I think. Yeah. I still knew you and I was like, mm. Yeah, still didn't watch I just don't watch, Dude, some like, of my best mates still haven't seen my shit. It's crazy. And, okay, and I'm like, just like, are we even best mates? Mate, like, it's <laughs> like uh, what, someone that... That I've heard you had some good run-ins in this in this season. One of my mates, Alex Co. He's uh, yeah. he's yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like we know him pretty uh, pretty well. Like he played yeah. footy at the same footy club that I played for. But um, yeah, uh, I yeah. didn't I didn't watch. We I, I know him and I didn't watch. Like that's I just, what I said. <laughs> <laughs> he had some good run-ins. Oh so. uh, yeah, we had some um, heated conversations, yeah. and I like. When I first met him, we got along pretty well, and mm-hmm. he told me about his mum and you know yeah, yeah, cancer yeah. and everything else. So yeah. like it's relatable because I've I know a, a few women that have gone through that. Like my nan is one of those. So yeah, yeah. But as the game went on, I just felt like that he just he wasn't smart. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like that. <laughs> still after still after the show, <laughs> I still, still sending daggers. <laughs> yeah. Look, even though I really, really know the guy, <laughs> I still think he's a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> just, just it must be hard. Like, so as far as I'm aware, like every time I've, I have, I've kept abreast of Survivor. I understand the general ideas of it and you could both talk about this, but there's a lot of lying and a lot of deceit and a lot of trying to get people on your side. And it's not just about being the best, hey? Is that correct? It's about being the best. It is about being the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. but you yeah. got to, you sort of got to get people on top because if you are the totally. best, if totally. you are the best, you can people can vote you out and just be like, yeah, oh, we don't, we don't. Uh, they're a threat. I, f- I feel like it depends on how insecure they are with their own game. So yeah. Yeah. I called that out a few times, but yeah. yeah, yeah, it's an interesting game. Like I, I love being able to read people and find mm. their like what's uncomfortable for them and when things go pear shape because a lot of them I don't know what their backgrounds are I don't yeah. know what sort of lifestyle <coughs> and adversity they've had to be able to navigate through that mess mm. so creating chaos for me worked like yeah. I loved it yeah it's mad. I, when you when you look at the the first couple of episodes and for many seasons they say it's pretty much like if you all got dropped into high school mm. but you didn't know any, each other yeah you know or even I, I don't know about you but I went to TAFE at, yeah. when I was like 18 yeah and there was like forty year olds there, yeah, you know, fifty year olds. Yeah, and that's you're like tr- true. Yeah, I went to uh, TAFE, and yeah, felt odd. You've just plunked into this classroom. Yeah, this and class. I was the old one. I was yeah, the actual. Yeah. I went there as an older kid. And when yeah. I say older, like they're all eighteen. I was like 23, 24. Yeah. And and but then, yeah, you see forty year olds yeah. um, come around doing their things. Yeah, it does yeah. feel like you just plunged into this weird group of people that you and don't you know you got to find your about. people mm. you know you find your people yeah 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 get that a little bit closer that mic um sorry to but um so what i was going to ask is so look one thing I, i've always seen in this sort of show is that like everyone's going ah oh, is it really real like is there but it does seem like you guys are struggling for na- you know nutrition and uh, and for like actually eating and, and stuff like that. it must get pretty tough and pretty challenging, hey? Well, well, yeah, but I and again, my life experience, I just knew that it wasn't permanent. Like I'm not homeless. I'm, I don't. Like, yeah. I still get to have food when I get home. So I didn't see it as a big challenge. Like yes, we're starving, and yes, our clothes are dirty, and yes, we're wet and everything else. But it's all temporary. Like you could get voted off tomorrow night. So yeah. I was yeah. just. Like thriving in it, I loved it. Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah. What, yeah. Well, let's go back to the like real start. <laughs> like, because why, what one? Like, what, so where, where? What leads up to applying and yeah. thinking you want to do something like this? And um, and where does that all begin? Like, wait, wait. That? Before we even get that, yeah. Kirby Bentley, who are you? Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. Where did we before we even get to Survivor? Because you used to be a WA girl, and people were probably wondering mm. why we're even sitting. Yeah. You know, even yeah, yeah. though the survivor connection, mm. yeah. we knew each other beforehand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a Mount Barker girl, so cracker country, anyone knows footy. Yep. Um, I grew up down there with Aboriginal mobs, so I'm Noongar. Um, 
yeah, we came up to Perth when I was 16. Yep. But I was playing um, National League netball at the time as well. So back then it was Perth Orioles. Yep. Um, turned into West Coast West Coast Fever. Yep. Into the AAS, did all that stuff. 24, mum's sister was murdered, domestic violence. And that just changed our entire life. So Fuck. I started playing footy um, because my middle sister uh, was playing footy. And netball is so selfish. Like it just takes away from everything. So... I stepped away from myself and wanted to get to know her and as the older sister, like, it was really important to me. So I started playing footy, um, ended up playing for Frio and Carlton, but during that time I was working in a mining company and that's where our paths crossed. Yeah. Like, we used to sit in the mess and just, you know, bitch about a few people and we'd probably <laughs> go off if we could. Um, but, yeah, it was just that, like, we, we just had good energy and, it's yeah, it's never changed. It didn't matter. I don't know the last time we spoke, but... It feels the same as it was when, yeah. what was it, about seven years ago or yeah, something? That, yeah. mm. Long time ago. Yeah. So, like uh, Mount Barker, that's uh, down Albany way, like yep. uh, uh, Bluff, Bluff Knoll, that's uh, yeah, that yeah, that sort yeah. of area. Prongrups, yep, yeah, down yeah, that yeah. Way. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, beautiful, down. fucking beautiful area. So nice. There's actually another, uh, just a side note, isn't there? There's another um, uh, summit you can do there that's. Potentially more beautiful than Bluff Knoll itself. I can't remember. The prong grubs? Yeah, potentially, yeah. 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 Good? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, well, not to go too far back, and then obviously you don't have to go and do it if you don't want to, but your mother getting murdered, that must have been a... Yeah, mum's sister. Mum's so sister. must have been... Fuck, that's a, such a life-changing event. Like, wh- what does that do to the family? Does it bring everyone together? What, is it, what does it do? <laughs> um, so, two years before that, so 2007 was sort of the beginning of our family's life sort of changing. So my dad's sister's son took his own life. Mm. Um, I was 21, living in Sydney, and that that's started to create that shift, you know, in sort of what is life and what does that look like and where do I sort of sit with that. But as a 21-year-old, I was still pretty selfish and immature. Um, then, yeah, 2009, mum's sister was murdered, domestic violence. He wasn't a... F- like, it wasn't physical, the mm. relationship. It was all psychological, but he... The fact that he made the threats to kill and she had documented it in her diaries and or everything else, we've gone to the police. Yep. So the, the system failed her heavily. Breached restraining orders, didn't even attempt to look for him. Mm. Um, he made his first attempt two nights before. He came over at Mirabuka Hill and my sister and my two cousins were with my auntie at the time. And he came down with a knife and my sister was quick to get on triple uh, zero, made the phone call and he took off. But again, the police failed to even attempt to look for him. <sighs> so the next night he, yeah, that's when he caught her. But she had 13 kids, 12 girls, one boy and the seven youngest all came to live with our family and that's sort of how I have been wholeheartedly grounded and I see life so differently. Fuck, so Having another seven kids come to live with you, what is that like? And that that, that in resi- itself is a huge challenge. Builds resilience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so my mum's lost her sister. My cousins have lost both parents. Mm. You know, one's in jail and the yep. other one's not here. Mm. And my nan's lost her daughter. So I'm removed from that direct impact, mm. but I can see what it's doing. And mum fell into this really dark space. And to watch that as well unfold, and to have my seven youngest. My cousins, me and my two sisters, we all moved out mm. so that they had a space to, to live and to be. Um, so, yeah, it, it was life-changing and it's horrific. Yeah. Like, it was national-wide news and it was a part of the, the Police Academy learnings for a long time. Mm. Yeah. Because there's been lots of failures you so know, in, that, in, that, um, in that area. You know, you just hear it day in, day out. Um, yeah. It's hard. Do they... Is there is there much work going into that space at the moment um, now, or are you seeing improvements in that area? No, nah, it's actually gone backwards. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So in this day and age, it, you'd think that there would be improvements. Mm. So not only did she leave him, she went and reported it. She went to housing to sort of like get safe housing or whatever yep. else, but they all said no for whatever reasons they had. Um, but not at any stage did she go back. But the um, perception was that. You know, they always go back. As an mm, Aboriginal woman, yeah. we always go back. And it just wasn't the case. <laughs> and you shouldn't you shouldn't categorise anyone. No. It's like yeah. me saying that you it's guys are the same case. person, like yeah. you're not. I did find <clears throat> when I, I've been up to the Kimberley a couple of times and we got to go to a couple of the Indigenous communities, which was fucking eye-opening. It was, it was incredible to see. Mm. 
Um, but yeah, eye opening. And then hearing um, about law and um, and the understandings of that, and just how basically the local communities just have to they sort of have to work around each other. If law comes into place and you know, so we've got to step aside and say, yeah, this is what it is. They're trying to respect that. But it's for me, it's like, it's almost like, and I'd like to hear your perspective on this, it's like the Western world and, and white man has stepped in and they've tried to implement their sort of way of life and uh, the indigenous communities have tried to maintain some sort of he- cultural heritage and then the, you can't have both and they're sort of just mixed up and it's created this sort of mess and it's hard to balance and... It's it's just hard to see how that that can be fixed. It's it's hard anyway. <laughs> I I see. No no no. It is it is. And cult, like we've got what three hundred different language groups. Yeah. So you know, it's to and up north is very different to us and our law and, and our understanding of what that looks like as well. So yeah, yeah. You can't. Nothing fits. Like not one one thing fits all. Yeah. Like it's like the schooling system. It doesn't. Mm. I struggled in school. I hated it. Yeah. Because I'm a visual learner. But yeah. I didn't learn that until later, like until my late twenties, probably. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very similar. Like it is what it is, and how it's all run. And if it's worked, why change it? <sighs> yeah. But if it doesn't, like, what? How do you make it work better? Mm. Not this is the way we, we do things. And yeah. like, do you conform. find? Do you find um, like in that space? You know, you've obviously gone through your trials and tribulation tribulations, and you know uh, what good is right because you would see uh, even though there's so much shit going on and drama as you said about survivor right mm. you you do really well when there's you know um, chaos, chaos mm. right and that like i think is works because it's how you grew up right yeah. chaos is going on left right and center yeah and you can still operate to a very high standard mm. and you still know who you are deep down because you've had to deal yeah. with all these things right in a space where it comes down to opinions, uh, whether it be domestic violence, whether it be about your culture, and you know, there's people up north and everything uh, about having the confidence of speaking your mind mm. about something where it's <laughs> your opinion might differ mm. to something in your yeah. own culture that has a different opinion, but they're they're some have really loud voices. Yeah. They nearly scream it at you and say, "You're wrong. This is right." But you yeah. have all the um, knowledge and, and you have your own opinion, right? Yeah. Just like Survivor. Right. I don't need to tell you my opinion, but yeah. I know what I'm thinking yeah. and I might disagree with you, but it's easier just to let you, let you say what you want and then me go off and go, yeah, it's n- I'm yeah. never going to change your mind because you're only listening to your own voice. Yeah. You're not actually listening what's coming in and I have just a big enough opinion just as you are. Like yeah. it was you. I, we both have, you know, different yeah, yeah, growing ups and come from different areas and we have different, the same cultural background. Uh, but in the, eye, the eyes of it, it must be uh, hard having that opinion because, you know, I don't have, I don't get stuck. I don't have, like, have to deal with that. Mm. Uh, I just stay quiet, you know, myself. Well, I don't yeah. think, and from, from what I can see in any point of life, anyone who tries to force their opinion on you or force you into thinking a certain thing, it's never, ever going to work. It's And I've used this example before. You see it with rehab, alcoholism and stuff. You know, you can't force someone to go into rehab and be successful. You might get a rarity where it works. But generally, you're not going to change unless you're ready to change. And um, I think all you can do is be an example of what you think is working for you. Yep. And if someone finds something appealing about what you're doing, they'll ask. Then they're ready to learn and to know. You could have two or three months earlier given them the same advice and told them this is mm. what you should do. And they would be like, okay, mate, no worries. I don't give a fuck. But if two months later they come to you and go, hey, you seem to be doing all right in that area, yeah. like what do you do to succeed in that in that way? I think they're always going to be more adopting of what you're trying to get across. And that's the same with any sort of opinion. It doesn't matter what your opinion is, whatever your, um, your thoughts, your feelings, you can't force it on anyone because it's just going to, push against and create the opposite effect yeah yeah well i think that was one of the big misconceptions for me in gameplay Mm. people thought that i was this sort of dictator and driver of this is what you're doing Mm. but that's not how i am in nature like Mm. i'm an aboriginal woman so i'm bottom of the food chain in society (laughs) and that's the way that you know i've grown up to understand so which means that i need to put it on the table so you're not threatened to land let this land uh, idea land and you can kind of take it on board and make it your own Mm. like and it and it's very manipulative but 
it's the only way that I can have people drop their guards and allow me to be me. Mm. Yeah. So that was the hardest thing to probably hear that people thought I was a dictator and it never was. Like you you play your game, you do what you need to. Yeah. I'll fit in and mould because I can adjust. Yeah. So what is it like as well, um, and you'd be dealing with this as well, seeing outside voices who weren't there, who, d- who see it, an edited version of whatever's happening, whatever sort of narrative they want to put across as well. Um, what is it like seeing, from a mental health point of view as well, um, people just saying, what a fucking asshole! this is a <laughs> dictator, whatever well, you want Well, Ke- Kirby got a lot of love. Like, you, you got know? a lot of love? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel did in like, the end, yeah, but yeah. not early on yeah. I, was, I was this strong woman that <clears throat> yeah, takes to a little, take a seat. Okay. A little bit of time. Once they, uh, you know, the public get a little bit more, you know, which is quite lucky because you obviously had a long game. Um, they got to see ya. Then they get to realise they're like, oh, she's actually, mm. she's, right. tough. <laughs> you know, she's tough. Yeah. yeah, she's got about a grit to it. And yeah, yeah. I always said, um, you know, again, giving you flowers is in. Sometimes there's that uh, that awkward convo mm. that like no one wants to bring it up. Kirby, I uh, watch her. She can bring it up <laughs> and with a smile, yeah. and it raises like the uh, the convo. So you can bring the, the convo is, to yeah. the table because some people are like, "Oh, I'm not bringing it up. I'm not saying that." <laughs> and she'll just say in a joking way, like, "Oh yeah, you try to go for me, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like you know, that's the best and way to do it. It's though. poking the stick, but yeah. it's uh, it's maintaining the relationship. It's soft you know confrontation. What? Yes, yeah. yes. Do you know what that? Yeah. That's the best way to do it because it makes them feel comfortable. Mm. Like, yeah. I did. Yeah, I went. Yes. I went behind your back. Yeah. I was. It's part of the game. Sorry, but yeah, like it's yeah. it's broken that tension, and now you can yeah. start to. But not pe- not many people can do that. Nah, a yeah. lot of people. That don't. is a good. That is a it's gift. A, yeah, it but is. A gift. I didn't. I didn't realize that I could do it as well as I was because I just think put it on the table. Let's talk through it. Like there's mm. no issues, no hard feelings, and it's not mm. personal. So, and that's how I played the game. Like. Eileen and Raymond were sort of prodding Kelly, who was in my alliance for information, and I just I was like. Kel, Eileen doesn't sit with us anymore. And Ray, you don't either do. Mm. Like, you know, yeah, like yeah. let's put it out there. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. Kelly's cracked and I'm like, all right, we're good here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, there was definitely a few, uh, you know, as I said, I watched back a few apps and I was just like, oh, yeah, you're, you're good at that, <laughs> eh? You're good at like... Uh, bringing it up on the table, you know. Yeah. Who went for my girl, eh? Who's yeah. got it on the resume? Which one are you? You know, and people were like, I'm not taking her shit, you know. But when I walked away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So do people you know? actually, though, because surely fully understanding this is a game that you're trying to win, that potentially some of these personalities and backstabbing, it's all specifically to win the game. It's not, you know, you're not there to create friends and stuff like that. Surely you'd have that underlying knowledge. So if I if you backstabbed me and we're in the same game, I'd be like, "Fuck you, you, you fucking you clever think, little you fucking prick! You got me." Yeah. That's what I'd be yeah, like. Well, that's, that's what you would be like. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how you operate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people uh, don't operate like no, that. They they, right. Yeah, they get dirty. Really? Yeah. 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 Like we're able really to play. Upset. We're able to talk, strat, and play yeah. a game, mm-hmm. and go for each other. Then go yeah. and connect on a personal Only level. Only the best like, can, can do that. Yeah. But not a lot of people can, no way. I'd be, yeah. you cheeky little prick. You <laughs> fucking got me. Fuck, yeah. I'm going to get you. Yeah. you watch. I'd well, be like that. But. One, of, one of the things that came up on the show, there's uh, Jaden. Now, Jaden's, you know, obviously, if you watched it, he's, you know, like big unit. He's, uh, I think he's like, he just did some strongman thing. Yeah. He's like number eight in the Australia oh. or something. Number four. Number, number four. four. Yeah, in yep. Australia. Big unit. Happy guy, uh, seems quite positive. And there was, uh, but I know a lot of people like that, uh, that um, their words and their banter and the way they talk to people, uh, mm. it, it can hinge on someone being derogatory or saying something out of school. And there was one moment on the show where uh, Caroline might have said something about, like, oh, this isn't your kitchen, or okay, King Jaden, you know, Lord, as a bit Lord of a Jayden. Lord Jaden. So, it's like a situation, you're just eating and someone's like, oh, okay, all right, Branch, you yeah, don't want to, um, you know, okay, we know it's your podcast studio, like blah, blah, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it builds a little bit of tension, right? Yeah. And it was something that he said that I, uh, I picked up on, and this is, mm. you got to be good socially, is like, you can't talk to me like that because we're not on that level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Which we yeah, have. It's still a matter of respect. So yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. as much as she was said it, he took it the wrong, you know, he took it the way that it was said. Mm. 
Um, and it was like, you can't talk to me like that because we're not on that level. Yeah. But if Kirby said it, oh, it would have been, you know, probably a little up the hell, but yeah, good luck, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's that rapport. We haven't yeah. sat on the beach and spoke about, you know, our families for ages. Yeah. And one of the things is on the show, you have um, such a long time there, but you will find that, um, you know, say for instance, if there's five people in this room, mm. you only speak to three and the other two haven't even said hello. Yeah. And, and you know... Some people go, well, you haven't said hello. But yeah. it's like, well, wait a minute. Um, you can also engage. Yeah. You yeah. can also come over and go, hey, let's have a chat, man. Yeah. Like, mm. And uh, talk about not the game, but let's talk about like life. life. Whatever. Yeah, yeah connect. You know? Well, I think sometimes those things, they bring out the real person as well. So, like, I'll do that with me mates. So, always banter. Yeah. You know, you'll be like, giving each other shit. And uh, I, I had a mate that I was pretty close with and I, I – I was giving him shit, you know, like fucking prodding him. And then it gets personal and then you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was, I was having fun, bro. <laughs> like, where, We're not on that level, bro. What, what happened? <laughs> and, but you realise it's not that, um, it's not the because uh, those, you can go personal with any one of your friends because you've got dirt on all of them and whatnot. And then, um, you know, like it's just one of those ones that some people, they get an ego check and they like, oh, no, I'm going to win this and go like, like really <laughs> like over the top you're like fuck man like okay yeah. I was just having fun but you've gone a bit harsh and that uh, I think people some people don't like the idea of losing and, and even if it's in a comic comedic sense with your mates like I'm always fine being the butt of the joke I'm the one in my group of mates like everyone will give me shit and I'll be like ha <laughs> Jokes on me, <laughs> yeah. classic. I, I'm fine with that. Like maybe I'm different. Maybe I'm not. Are but you I, sure about yourself? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think why. that's a big thing. It's like oh, I'm confident in the person yeah. I am. So yeah. everyone can give me shit. Sometimes I'll be like, "Fuck off!" It makes <laughs> you <laughs> such an <laughs> <up>, can't. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, generally most of the time I'm willing to take it. But uh, yeah, I think you can find the real person when you when you fool, when you get into them and you give them mm. a little bit of stick. And if they get personal back, you're like, "Oh, okay." Mm. I'm not going to do that with you anymore. You've 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 lost that. So. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely you'll find a few of them on the show for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. in life as well, right? You work with people that you just don't click with. So yeah. you know, I I walk into things with an agenda. Like if I'm meeting with somebody, what's their agenda? And I'll meet them at that. Mm -hmm. I won't just go, oh yeah, we can all be friends because yeah. we don't know each other. And yeah. if you uh. if I know that you want something from me, mm. then all right, let's talk about that. And that's yeah. where we stop it. Yeah. That's sort of how I function and have been programmed. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So now to run it back, all right. So you've, um, yeah, you're growing up's been, you, know, you can probably touch on that for probably, I can imagine, such a long time. But you're now currently over East and you got a relationship. What's happening there? Where are you? Uh, what are you working? Are you coaching? Yeah. So I, I got contracted to Carlton in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, and my body was shot. I was purely getting drafted on a reputation. Okay. Um, didn't make the a the grand final f team, and then after that, you know, just sort of left the game. But I, I felt lost. Like all I've ever known in sport, and sport is what sort of got me out of trouble, mm. and yeah, just kept me on the straight and narrow. But it's the only thing that I that I knew. Yeah. Um. So yeah, to step away for the three years, I, I wanted to get back into footy and be involved you know, in some yeah. way. So it was coaching for me. So, yeah, I started at um, Western Bulldogs and it was just after COVID as well. So I went through a breakup, started coaching at Western Bulldogs as a development coach, AFLW, and I also just converted my van. So went through a breakup, all of my family's in WA mm. and I started living in my van outside <laughs> of a gym. The gym owner, he was so good. He gave me the key, he let me use the toilet, showers, whenever. Oh, so I was... Wow. I did that for a year and a bit. As a, as a female, too, it was a little bit of challenge around yeah. <laughs> everything else. Yeah, but, totally. yeah, I learned to enjoy that to the back end of those last few months. And it wasn't long after that then I just thought I need to challenge myself and, yeah. Yeah. Is that when the survivor Yeah, I sort, of, I sort so of did you apply? In. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we obviously work together because that's obviously – that's where our yep. first time we ever met, right? Um, bomb crew? Yep, last yes. crew, yep. Now, the people that don't know, uh, in the mining game, there's – I used to be a driller. I started off as a bottom as a driller, as offsider. When I met Curb, she was working for Blast Crew, and um, that is one of the most taxing jobs. And to see – it's sometimes it's male-dominated. Yep. So when you see a woman up 
in the Pilbara, especially through summer, even through winter because it's that bloody cold, yeah. mm. um, you are like you know that person has one resilience. They are just yeah. strong of character yeah. because they uh, work day in, day out, day out with a lot of men and they um, hold their own and Curbs yeah. held, holds their own plus yeah. some. You know, they would say mm. some of the, the strongest workers out there were the women, you know, because yep. they wouldn't be hanging around, mm. you know. Not many people could do it. Some people like, I remember one lady was like, oh, I got a heat stroke after one day and it was like, <laughs> yeah, okay, this is probably not going to work out for you. Maybe yeah. back in the admin doing, you yeah. know, flights and stuff. Yeah. People. But anyways, um, so that's how we met. I went. Did, did you leave before I went on Survivor? Because that's where I did my first one. I, I obviously let them know. Yeah, I, I reckon I left because I ended up doing my knee. I had a um, did my ACL in one of the Melbourne games, and yeah, being shot firing, you it's twelve and a half hour days out on the pit, like loading bomb. Yeah. So I couldn't walk anymore, and got a an office job yeah. in the city, yeah, and the I city. think that's where. We've sort of parted yeah. and then I saw him on TV and I try to watch it yeah. and understand. Just yeah. I had no yeah. clue. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. clue. Yeah. But King of the Jungle. Yeah, King of Jungle, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, um, do you know what's so crazy, right? Is, yeah. um, so I know when I went first, like first on, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my old lady. I didn't tell my brothers, mm. my sisters, nothing. Did you tell anyone or did you keep a secret? Mm. I, I told my mum um, and sisters because. If I didn't, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they think no, something yeah, would happen, right? Because so, yeah. there's no phones, there's no contact. Mm. Um, and yeah. two months, like, to, you know, yeah. you would have been gone for, what, over 45, 45 days-ish around there. Yeah, yep. yeah. So two months, obviously, pre-filming and then the filming of the show. Yeah. Um, and then you get back. But I also didn't want to tell people because if I got voted off first, like, shame. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. no way oh, I wanted shame. to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, no way. Yeah. But, yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't tell yeah. anyone what happened Yes. You know, I just let them watch yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's so. how I did it as well. Well, that's... Yeah. Um, I they mean, must have been proud. Yeah. How, how, oh, yeah, how yeah, proud yeah. to our mum and, mum and the fam, you know? Yeah, well, from, like... And it, I did it for my people more so because mm. we're not celebrated enough. Yeah. And I'm so proud to be an Aboriginal in this country and I feel like that we need to connect and have more conversations around yeah. just who we are as yeah. people, not, yeah. not like... Uh, separate each other mm, and yeah. keep going down that path like let's put it on the table and let's celebrate what this is so and as an aboriginal woman mm. bottom of that food chain i just wanted to shift that narrative and That's a lot of our people have really it, a lot of people have just seen it differently now well you went out with the bathers that had the aboriginal flag yeah. I mean, who made them like where do you get them no, from? i've worn them for like 10 years oh. budgie budgie smugglers make oh yeah so, oh, do they? yeah yeah so oh, tag I, out hey, yeah. tag them out hey collaborate yeah surely surely get Kirby as the ambassador yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? sponsor me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested <laughs> because so you're saying that it's five was your next challenge because you know you've you've had You've obviously had a few challenges in your life, but uh, I guess challenge, uh, drive and purpose is something that really c- gets a lot of people through their days, I I believe. Yeah. Um, I think it always ends up coming back to finding something within yourself and that inner happiness. Yeah. But that drive and purpose is something that can help a lot of people day by day. And yeah. I see it a lot with professional athletes. And when they finish, they need something. And you can fall into a fucking pit. And yeah. um, like I was never a professional athlete. I did semi-professional football and that, that drive and purpose really kept me going until I was sort of 27 when I sort of finished. And then after that, I fell in this hole and didn't know what to do. I put my energy into a business and that seemed to fill it for a bit. But it's, you know, it's always something like now it's ultra marathons, but I always need something yep. to push me, to drive me. And <clears throat> again, I say that I'm coming back to finding that happiness within myself. And, and it's not an easy journey and an easy path to find that. But... Uh, I understand that you're trying to do Survivor. What's next for you? Like, do you do you go right? Okay, maybe my drive and purpose is putting that into my community. It's uh, maybe it's uh, fundraising. Is it more sport? Like, was where, where, it more reality TV? <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted the like the stimulation again. I wanted to step out of that comfort zone, or you know, that sort of. I was really stagnant, and mm. I didn't want to be there anymore. And I just wanted yeah, to grow as a person but I also felt like with my journey as a netballer and footballer, a lot of coaches yeah. just thought that I had this natural talent without working at it and I worked really hard behind mm. closed doors and they don't see that. So the assumption then 
I was not only arrogant, I just relied heavily on my talent. So I was put in this box and slowly over time that, that gets to you, that you s- sort of, you know, you feel like you can't be yourself. Mm. So Survivor brought out <laughs> who, I, who I was and how I actually am. So I'm cheeky, I'm a smart ass, like, and that's what it is. But I, I'm also respectful. And if you show respect to me, yeah. then you'll have that forever, mm. you know, from my end as well. So... But you pissed me off. I've got to vote your ass out. That's what it is. Well, I guess that's, <laughs> so I guess that's the difference because in like in real life, for me, if someone was cheeky and a prick to me, I, for me, I just I might call them out and go, "Hey, I didn't appreciate that," and then I'd sort of like, "Okay, I'm cutting ties now." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Survivor, you you got to confront it, yeah, yeah, and then you've got to go. Well, also, <laughs> I'm going to vote your fucking ass off, like, and then it's very it's in everyone's faces. So I guess it's it's putting those sorts of confrontations out there for everyone to see within a like a group that you have to stick around with after you potentially have tried to vote them off. What's that like <laughs> sitting around with someone that you've just said, hey, I want you gone? Oh, I, like, I didn't care because I was there to play the game. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like we've got good banter, right? So we're able to sort of go like you had a crack at me, like, yeah. you know, good on you, but what does this look like for you moving forward? Mm. We can do that, but not everyone can. So yeah. that's the story arc of yeah. the whole season. What um, do you branch. What do you think the reason is behind that? Or why can't? What What's the difference between the people who can and can't? I think they played too personally and emotionally. Mm. I, mm. Like it's a gameplay. So if you can make a move and mm. let it land, or if you can make a move and it doesn't, like, and you can then figure something else out because mm. everyone's playing their own game. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes uh, I think it's based on. Um, being able to really just um, s- separate the game, mm. so it's like you're playing chess, um, and then you got to take the personal side out of it. Um, Mark was on there, and one of the things he said very simply is, "You got to take the emotion in mm. out of the game. That the mm. fact that you need to turn on someone, and you also need to be confident that your best friend mm. um, is going to ride or die with you because." Yeah. Amount of time someone goes, I'll oh, ride or die or something, and then you hear later on that they've tried to turn on you. You're like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh. And <laughs> that has been the the story arc of this season. So sh- the winner, um, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> Ferris, uh, her and Ferris's relationship on there was highlighted hugely, mm. and they were like, um, kind of like trying to get each other out. But what I found very interesting is. When someone has, uh, it's kind of power within the game. Uh, you have a group of people that would be willing to listen to what you're saying, mm. so they would be more likely to say, "Go in my direction." Or you have a few people. They didn't actually go for each other. They were like taken down there like pawns. It'd be like, <laughs> "All right, you've got this guy that works for you. I'm taking him out to make you weaker." Yeah. You know, it was never like I'm going to take you out. Yeah. It was just like, I'm going to take your pawn out, your pawn out. The support network. Yeah, and then eventually you realise you've got these, you know, king and queen or (laughs) whatever, and it's like, oh, well, we're better just working together, you know? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Now against the other guys. Mm. Uh, It's a really crazy dynamic. And um, What's that like playing out? Like, can you see that unfolding? You clearly don't go in with that intention, but it's just however the game unfolds and just go, right, actually, you know what, it serves me better that I line with you now, or is that how it works? Uh, I worked it from a... a tribal council to tribal council like or like on the daily so things change mm. on the hour like mm. it was hectic and Ferris and I we went at each other but it was because of Garrick yep. and Alex yeah they're the reasons why I explain because sort of like Alex uh yeah uh, I want to hear the <laughs> dynamic uh, again I don't watch the show and I feel bad uh, Alex is a, a mate as well and I didn't put any effort in to watch so I don't know what <laughs> happened yeah. but uh, yeah. you guys had some run-ins as well so that's uh, well, cool I want to hear this I, I was yeah no yeah. I was always open to working with anyone I think you have to be because yeah. the, like everyone's playing their own game but yeah. somebody's plan like your plan might suit my game so I'll be like take my vote let's mm. let's work this out but not everyone was like that and when I first got there everyone's sort of figuring out oh you know Peter came up and said, oh, let's have this girls' alliance. We'll get rid of Raymond and Kelly. Mm. This is in the water well. First five minutes, like, pissing down, raining. And I'm like, I don't even know these people. Yeah. Why are you dropping their names in? And what is it? Like, why are you coming at me? Mm. 
I didn't realise that they also put me in their sexy alliance. First of all, my rig wasn't ready to be in that sexy alliance, so <laughs> I wasn't in. But they <laughs> also didn't come and talk to me. Like well, I That's didn't a good speak. feeling, buddy. Eh? You got put to sexy alliance. I've been you the know? fresh brows before. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I wasn't taking that shirt off for a minute. But yeah, Alex, he actually didn't speak to me until I wrote his name down when I was voting with Eileen because yeah. I was trying to – mend things it, even though i didn't lie to anyone at that stage yeah yeah i was trying to mend things and he just couldn't understand it and he was like nah i'll just choose the bro yeah yeah <laughs> what's the go like once uh so when you first lie when you're like i'm going to align with you yeah did you, did you do any of those things where i'm going to i'm going to align with you and then you vote against him did i i'm, I'm sorry i didn't watch <laughs> um <laughs> it was more blindside so that and i didn't technically i didn't lie um it was what the whole game yeah. Wait, no, wait, wait. Well, wait, when it was in the group situation where someone goes, all right, who are we voting tonight? And then the whole, gr- say, four or five people know what's going on, but the one person walks up and they're like, <laughs> like you know, they're like, yeah, Kelly walks up. That's like, a group, man. Right, that's so not what are we doing? And then you're like, oh, I thought we're all voting. And then they walk off and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't put myself in those situations. A lot of times around the water well. Yeah. So if I knew what was going on, and a lot of the time, it was my plan. I was comfortable that it was put in place early because mm. if it's done early and people start to panic, they revert back to that. So mm. I was cool with that. But, yeah, even at Tribal Council, I'll just say, I had the conversations I had and yeah. I just need them to this trust is, me. Like, it's going to be cool. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of time it did. But it was Eileen I blindsided Ferris with. He had no idea, but I couldn't tell him because – he would have done something about it and I needed her gone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's about uh, the fact is I need to take out your friend, but I, I know that it's going to hurt your feelings and I have to do it without you knowing because you could blow up the whole play. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but knowing that, that's how I, my game kind of got shot in the foot because I kept one of my closest allies out, Michelle, mm. uh, great friends, <laughs> and she's uh, she was dirty on me. <laughs> Dirty, dirty. <laughs> she was like, if you told me, I would have been all gravy. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, but I just felt like, you know, you would get emotional <laughs> like you are now. Yeah, you, yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You're doing what I thought you <laughs> would do. Yeah. It's so funny when you talk about the lie because I remember, you know, I've done oh, too many. But the idea is um, some of the ones that I remember, which are, you know, the craziest ones are ones where – I feel like you and you are already getting me out, but I've already made plays to mm. get you out. Yeah. Mm. So I've actually, I know you're going, but you think I'm going. Yeah. And so I'd go up to you and be like, please save me, Curbs. Yeah, yeah. Come on, like, you know, I love this game. Like, is there anything to do? And you're like, sorry, Luke, there's nothing I can do. And I'm like thinking, dude, you're going anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I just wanted to see that last minute to see if you would. Yeah. And it shows you wouldn't. Mm. Yeah. So you got to go anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, so I yeah, yeah. So it's really, really taking uh, advantage of the game. I think I'd be um, too kind, man. I don't, yeah. I, don't think I, I don't think I lied. I just didn't say anything. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I just... Like, I just uh, what do like, they call oh, that? Yeah, lying sure. by omission. But just, that's uh, not a mission. Technically, you're, you're just saying what you want and yeah. I'm just listening. Yeah, yeah. 100%. She's smiling. When she's smiling at you. <laughs> when, Kirby, when Kirby's hell smiling at you. <laughs> you know deep down you're about to get the kiss of death, you know. I could, uh, yeah, I couldn't help but smile every tribal council. That's except for the last one where Ferris broke up with me. But yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. How's how's that going? How's that relationship going? Because he was talking mad shit about you on one of those podcasts yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> nah, just joking. <laughs> no, 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 we, we're good, yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah. Like our, our cultures came together. Yeah. Like that's what we connected on. Yeah. You see us in the background, we're always bantering. So we had that ability to like relate to each other mm. personally and then play the game and I'd tell him like, I want to get rid of you, like you're doing my head in or something and he'd say the same thing but then we'd go and laugh over here for two minutes. So yeah. It was, yeah, it was hectic and apparently that doesn't really happen a lot. We did okay. get a good winner this year. Yeah, uh, yeah. So fun. yeah, uh, Ferris is a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. So he just like um, Kirby, you know, kind of wanted to represent the culture. Yeah, and uh, it was it's it's crazy because as you said, there's a lot of you know, well, Survivor is uh, it gets played in Sweden, mm. it gets played in the UK. Mm. It's mm. it's a really it's like such a world. Mm. Yeah, you know, franchise. Yeah, and so when you get these different cultures and you know different winners and stuff, they really he posted something after he'd won, mm. and you know, f- yeah, it gives you a bit of a respect. Yeah, well, Coey, who um, th- th- that was my way of looking at what was going on through 
what he was posting as it was going on. When Ferris won, um, uh, he posted something about like you know learning about his culture and doing some praying with him and stuff like that, which was um, yeah, I like seeing that sort of thing. If you're going to spend some time with someone on a fucking island for <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, how long are you there for? Yeah. How, well, we're out there oh, yeah. forty something days, yeah. forty three days or something. Surely you want to learn something about the people you're with, yeah. Yeah. like, and that would be something I'd really want to do. So. Alex was great like that. Like um, Ferris was, he did his prayers on the daily, and he yeah wanted to learn more about his culture and. Ferris was great. He brought him in, and Alex was so respectful in that space. But yeah. like Alex and I, we got along. But I just he just wasn't, just wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Right? Well, he's, he's an athlete, but hey, yeah, yeah, how yeah. good did you watch when you know he? Some of his challenges, I was like, dude's got. Yeah, he, he can he can move around. We well, used to play down at West Perth. Um, yeah, he was telling me he played waffle. Yeah, so oh, really? he played um, better than you were. Better than you were. He didn't play as many games yeah. as me, <laughs> but I didn't play many games either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he uh, yeah he does mountain climbing and stuff, and um, he's very active. Yeah, he's an active sort yeah, of so bloke. He's so. a WA boy. Who's who's from WA then? Uh, uh, from this cast? So, so me, Peter, and Alex. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm based in Melbourne, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, but I, I like seeing the relationships between uh, people within any sort of um, program. I'm even watching like um, uh, I just started watching. I never watch like reality TV programs, yeah. but this is the one that I watched the first season. And I just started watching the second season. Physical One Hundred. Do you oh, watch yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah? yeah that's and funny. I mean, I love the overdubbing. Like the. Yeah. I, I didn't know I could lift it. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I went so much harder than I thought I could. <laughs> That's, I love that Dude, shit. Those challenges on there yeah. are next level. But yeah, I was same. I was watching the first episode of the new season and it was treadmill. And I was like looking at their times and I was like oh, – I would have won. Yeah, I would have won that one. That's that's easy. They only yeah. ran like four and a half k's yeah. in twenty two minutes or something like that. So, but um, uh, but I watch it and I like seeing in that. I like watching the dynamics of people trying to work together mm. and and um and people who are trying to be a team leader. Mm. Like I'm going to lift everyone up here. I'm going to. I like watching that and seeing it because I always think I'd be a leader. I always think that. But then you start to watch a question, your show like that and you're like, would I? Well, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this South Korean? So, uh, uh, Korea or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's so funny. We I had this uh, chat the other night when I was with my mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were talking about like the uh, – uh, across all cultures, there's languages where you don't even need to you know, say, for instance, that everyone gets and it's humour, yeah. right? So if I walked – you know, into the wall. Yeah, you couldn't even understand me, but ah, yeah, it's really yeah, funny, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I think there was two others, but I was pretty wasted. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> something about I think it was uh, fitness and so on. Yeah, yeah. So and it was about you know you can respect a good athlete. Yeah. You know, across every culture, mm. you know, like Phelps the swimmer. Yeah. You know, um, mm-hmm. Usain Bolt. Yeah, Usain. Like yeah, it's yeah. just it doesn't matter uh, what culture or yeah. where you're from. It's just there's that respect there, mm. and, and that's where it brings in that show. It's just like oh, I'm the greatest ballerina mm. of yeah. Korea. You know, it's <laughs> you're like yeah, you know. yeah, because in that in that scenario, they're all different athletes. All some of them are not even athletes. Some of them are actors, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but. The fact that some of it's team sports, it's yeah, and it gets down to probably the last two or three where you're like, okay, that's that's going to be quite difficult one on one. But when there's like a team sport, when I think last season they were pushing a log, yeah, the, or yeah something that like that. Heck. You're like, if you're on the wrong team, you're fucked, and you <laughs> could be the best athlete there. So yeah. it does come down to like a bit of luck as well. Yeah. But yeah, I just like watching that. The, the the dynamic and watching and and then you question yourself you're like I think oh and that's the best thing about reality TV is you watch it when you do watch it because I did watch it when I was younger and you'd watch it and go this is what I would do in this situation and then you question yourself now yeah. and you're like <laughs> actually would I like I don't know if I'd be strong enough to do that or I don't know if I'd be good enough so to 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 say that like you know the team challenges on the the you know physical one hundred right is <laughs> To bring it back to Survivor, when mm. you have challenges, you would have some people that would try to throw a challenge. What's your <laughs> opinion on people that would say, if I came to you, Kerbs, even if I was in your line and said, we need to throw this. Some people are like, we don't throw. They don't care about the strategy. They don't che- like, you know, of the strategy of throwing. Yeah. yeah. What if, what would you think of me and said, oh, we need to throw this challenge? Well, it depends on what you're throwing it for. Like if we've got a p- plan in place yeah. and I know it's 
like it benefits sure. both of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah you don't it wouldn't care. bother me. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your strategy always <laughs> on top. Yeah, I'm like that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Why be against it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's what happened in the first in our first um, tribal council. Like the sexy alliance that I thought or they thought I was in um, said that they're throwing the game. I was like, I don't care. Like yeah. we've already got a plan. It was on day two, so yeah. like go for it. Yeah, because it's not my business. Like mm. handle it. Um, and yeah, we went to the challenge through it, like. Garrick blew up. Ferris, you know, he got mad too. But I was like, well, we've got a plan. Like, why are you so mad? I guess the thing that I, I wouldn't get mad, but I, I like playing games. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, no, I want to play. I want to yeah. try. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So it's, it's someone stopping your efforts from winning. Yeah. And so that happened in our season, very mm. simple. We had to sit on a raft and we were trying to row to get something. And there was someone that was trying to throw a challenge, didn't tell. But when you watch back, he was rowing the other way and we didn't even pick it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so imagine like, I'm like, behind okay. and you're rowing backwards. <laughs> then he had to go get a key, right? Yeah. And he was running to get a key. He got it. And then next one, as he's running back, he dropped it. And then he was like, oh, had to run back. And it was like, you sit there on the day and you're like, what the hell? This guy's clumsy as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, actually, thinking actually about it, it, if I was the guy throwing it, that does seem fun as well. Because that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. To try and disguise it. Yeah. That would actually be... A, well, cause then we're Ooh, that excites right? me. Maybe I should do something like this. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably do. I'd probably... This is the thing. I don't watch it, but I'd probably do it. I'd probably try and do survival. I'd probably try and do one of these, to be the sneaky. mole or something like that. Because yeah. I, I do like trying to be tactical and sneaky and yeah. stuff. Well, you like wouldn't that. normally do it in normal life, right? No. So no. It's no. like that situation. You know, you should, if he, you know, he didn't tell anyone, he knows he should be trying to win. He hasn't told anyone. The feeling of doing that while yeah. everyone's the trying to win yeah. is, is like, <laughs> I know I shouldn't be doing this, but this is fun, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you, can't yeah. Do it, you can't do it in your sporting teams, too. Like Actually, yeah, so this is this yeah. is funny. Well, unless you uh, you go to sports bet, you yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So Delby, uh, he used to run this um, like uh, for his birthday, he'd go and do a drinking challenge day, and everyone would drink, and, and then you'd do a, like a survivor thing, and you'd vote someone out, and it'd be the last one left would win. And I remember on the last day, I um, I told everyone, oh, no, on the first vote, I was like, everyone just fucking vote for me. I'm too drunk. This isn't going to work. But I had a and a safety out card, oh, yeah. like I could get out of jail free card. <laughs> so I told everyone to vote for me, fuck it. And then I voted for, uh, I think for Delby or yeah. something. Like I just right. backstabbed him. Yeah. And then you go in and you watch on the um, the camera and we had a diary and everything. We all oh. watched it at the very end after a few beers. And I go into the diary room and I, I was like, I'm telling everyone to vote for me, but I've got to get out of jail free card and I'm going to turn it on Delby and fuck him <laughs> over. And I loved it. So actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be that yeah, guy. Yeah, love I love it. Dude, it's so, so much fun. <laughs> we, we used to back at high school play hacky sack. And, you know, at high school you'd have, say, the Aboriginal uh, guys, you'd have some yeah. um, you'd have some Asian mates. Yeah, you'd yeah, have yeah. Like, you know, and we'd be all hacky sacking. And somehow all the Asians would join up together <laughs> and they would lob the hacky sack really softly to them and their mates <laughs> would boot it at, <laughs> yeah. at the white boys, right? Yeah. And then what happened is the you'd make a pack at classroom that at oh. lunchtime you would throw the hacky sack at, like so, if you were the yeah, Asian yeah, boy, yeah. you'd throw it as your own mate, and he would bang it straight back. He'd be like, "I'm joining the white boys." You know? <laughs> it was the most weirdest shit. It was like you know, and then everyone was like, "Oh, okay, well, what's the hell it is?" Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and it was uh, yeah, it was so funny. Like it was the backstab, and then we're playing hacky sack. I've yeah. just had that realization. I would, I genuinely Survivor's would be the, game, I would be fun. the sneaky yeah, little. Yeah. I'd do whatever I'd have to do because I can. I would be able to change it. I would be able to go. No, this is a game. I'm not a dickhead. I'm not an asshole. Yeah, I'm just playing the game. Exactly. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I like being yeah. mischievous. Like, How do I sign up? <laughs> I want to do this. Auditions. Is, yeah, they are casting <laughs> right now. Right now. Oh. Just saying. The just thing saying. is, and do you know what I'd struggle with most? Uh, do you have kids? See, I would, and I don't know how you go with it being away from the kids. Like, I, I, I struggle, um, like, just going, I, I went to Europe and that's a fun holiday trip and I went for 21 days and that was a fucking nightmare being yeah. away from my daughter. And that's fun. you got things distracting you, you're going around, you're mm. sightseeing. Um, being alone, that loneliness on, like, an island, like, fuck. Complete isolation too without any, any other comms no, but yeah. who yeah. you're sitting with. Yeah. And I still had... FaceTime and I still had a, oh, I don't know yeah. how I could possibly like I, I'm sure totally, I could yeah. but fuck that would that would be challenging for me 
I loved, yeah. I loved it. I didn't, I didn't see it as a challenge like that because it was all temporary. Like yeah. life could be worse, right? Totally. So I'll tell you a little bit about Auntie Andrea and my cousin as well. Yeah. So I just saw it as I am back to the 90s where you're wholeheartedly present and yeah. you're knowing, you're finding out about yourself, you're learning about other people and you can't help but be present in a game like that. Like it was fun and it's all temporary. What is it? And uh, that's and something you both have got to experience that. And we've had a, a guy who walked across Australia um, with camels, same sort of thing. He said, when you, you don't have your phone, you don't have access to anything else except for the fucking sky mm. and, and the, the people around you and, and the, the camels. camels. Yeah, the camels. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and a few condoms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it gets lonely in the desert. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, John does sponsor this podcast, so apologies, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but, I'm not going to say or deny that he had sex with camels. You know, just but he just <laughs> there um, was a little low over there that took a little bit longer. But, than usual. One thing you did say was you complete thoughts. Yeah. You get you get to this point where you just you're going through these things and you just reach the completion of a thought without having any distractions, yeah. and that must feel uh, hard hard to deal with initially. But once you start, it, it, might, it must become addictive as well. You must just enjoy it. I, yeah. lo- I love being present. Like, I think it's, it's so important and we just can't be in this day and age. Like, if we're not on our socials, we're missing out on opportunities or we're missing out on certain things and mm. we're not connected as such But because that's our way of connecting now. But I, we, grew up with our, we grew up with the phones on the wall. Mm. You'd just say, I'll meet you yeah. at five and that's yeah. where you go, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Once, once the lights are, uh, you know, what is it? The street lights yeah. go blacker yeah. and you're not back and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's insane. Like, it, yeah. I, I, I love the experience yeah. of being wholeheartedly present in that moment. I've, d- I've made a conscious effort and it, it's quite serendipitous we brought this up. I literally started yesterday. Now, I, I try to be as present as I can with my phone and and not uh, have it as much as I can around my daughter, for example, when I'm, um, you know, I'm a 50-50 parent, so I need to take advantage of the time I have with her as as it is. But uh, yesterday specifically, I was like, no, 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 afternoons, pick her up from school, there's no phone, this is done. Um, And I put the phone away and... Is that why you didn't get back to (laughs) (laughs) me? I put the phone away and... Um, I wrote down a list, a, a, like a checklist on the chalkboard for me and Scotty to go through for things we were going to do after school. So we had spelling, homework. Um, she's only six, so it's not yeah. over the top. And then we had bike riding because uh, she still can't ride a bike. And uh, then we're going to go for a walk to the lake, feed the ducks. And uh, and then I've got free time. So if you want an iPad, you can find out the iPad, yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, I, I put this conscious effort into doing it. And no phone... Uh, except for once we, <laughs> I had to run inside to get the phone because we got to ride on the bike for the first time and she was riding fine. I was like, I need to film yeah. this properly. <laughs> uh, I sent it to Steph. But um, uh, I didn't post it on socials or anything. I just sent it to Steph and I was like, I've got her doing it. But by putting that conscious effort in and being present with her and, t- and, and actually just going, um, like giving her confidence. No, you can ride your bike. Like you can do it, you just need to know that you can do it, and then you'll be fine to do it. And I put that conscious effort into being present with her. And then we went to the park. I didn't take my phone. We went to fed the ducks. We I talked to her about the ducks, the swans. We talked to an old man who was sitting there feeding the ducks there as well. Like we just everything was being yeah. about being present. And I got back, and I just felt so much better about yeah. everything. Yeah, way, and yeah, and way. we achieved way more as well. Yeah. And um, so from now on, uh, that's. <clears throat> that sort of little that stage between three and five, I'm, you're just not going to be able to reach me anymore, regardless. Because Imagine I'm just if, gonna you, if you put right at the end, you're like, um, you know, uh, relax time, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with my daughter, she'll be like, no relax time. <laughs> <laughs> we on to the, yeah. Now we're doing, you know, uh, something else crazy, and I'm like. Well, just give me five minutes. <laughs> well, what, <laughs> made, <exhausted. laughs> so what made me so happy and a little exhausted was at the end of that, I said, we've got free time now, so you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And I was like, you can play on the trampoline, uh, we can play hide and seek, you can go on the iPad, watch TV, 
whatever you want. And she's like, oh, I want to go on the trampoline and do some tricks, but you have to come on with me. So I'm like, oh, okay, no worries. <laughs> and then, oh, I said, oh, I'm about time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I said, um, we've got, uh, I've got to make dinner now. So I had to, I had to make dinner. Uh, so I was like, any anything you want, you know, iPad. I get on touch. I, 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 I hate doing it, man. But I was like, I just need to be able to make you dinner right now, okay? And then she's like, oh, I'm gonna go play with Blue. So she went outside and played with the dog. I went outside and she's putting pegs on the dog's ear. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? That's better than the iPad, though, surely. Uh, but a hundred percent. And yeah. I came outside and I, I, I gave her a hug and I was like, I'm so proud of you. You've had such a good day. So like. Do whatever you want. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know when you, you know when people aren't present with you as well, right? So oh. if you go out to lunch or whatever, and they're on their phone or they're doing whatever, mm. like there's distractions, which means that you don't get that quality time or yes. connection. Like connection's huge. A hundred percent. I've love been that. I've been trying to do it at a co- at the coffee shop, which I go for a walk to the coffee shop with my dog and my daughter every morning before school. And there's people sitting around having a coffee, and sometimes you talk to them, sometimes you don't. But if you put your phone down, you always talk to them. Yeah. And you have these great conversations. <laughs> and uh, by ha- by doing that, I've met two or three people who have been able to network and help me with the podcast and um, and just create better relationships yeah. with the people around me. Yeah. I think you present the best version of yourself when Definitely. you can actually be present. And, yeah. and I think it's the greatest form of love that you can show is by listening. We're like we're given two ears and one mouth for a reason, you know, um, by truly listening to someone and then responding to what they have said to you instead of, I'm listening to respond. Yeah. It's a huge difference. And yeah, I think it shows true love. It's a true form of love and compassion. Talk, yep. Talking about love, uh, you had any marriage proposals from <laughs> any you know, super fans or anything? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of um, straight married women. It's it's so oh, wild. Yeah. Like, yeah, really? yeah. They're like, oh, I'm, I wasn't sure if I was anything until now. Like, yeah, wow. kids and everything. So. Oh. I just like, oh, I hope you discover yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Though, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's wi- it's a wild experience. Like, and everyone's pretty kind and polite with it all too. Mm. Like, you know, the, you get the odd idiot that sort of says you're a, you're a dictator. You yeah. need to take your seat. You know, whatever else. So I just they need those, but they yeah. need they yeah. need. You know, they're, they're the people that get invested. Well, okay. Well, this is this does lead me to a question because this is something that's difficult for a lot of people being in the public eye. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you've already had a bit of that with the the, the Orioles and the moving into you know the, the AFLW to a certain extent. Obviously, Survivor brings that even further to a um, a bigger sort of uh, mainstream media um, coverage nightly. People watching it. It must get to a point where do you get become self conscious? Do you walk around the streets going, I wonder if people recognise me? Do I have to be careful about what I say? Like, is, does that start to happen to you? Uh, well, it wasn't so much with uh, footy and netball because, you know, I paid to play. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it was a very different world back then. Yeah. But with this show, like, I know who I am and I know my values and what I stand for. But also, again, being who I am and my nationality, you know, my culture, I've never really just said things just because. Mm. Because I'm so conscious of how I'm going to be perceived as that. Mm. So... Yeah, I've always been steady with that, and I've, I'm big on you show me respect. I, it's it'll come, yeah, come back, back at you. Mm. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm I'm okay to call people out and just you know make them yeah. own things. But at the same time, like <coughs> I really don't care if people have good, an opinion good, if they don't know me. Good at confrontation, but doesn't like confrontation. Like I still feel like, um, as you said, to touch on like because I reckon I can uh, touch on this is like. The fact is, uh, are you going to operate differently now? Because people now know who yeah. you are, and you know. Yeah. Do and, you uh, find do you it know, as well? Now I'm like, fuck it. You know, mm. like a little while ago, I got done for running through the cop, uh, <laughs> cops and shit. <laughs> I've got some other stuff that's going on, but do you know what? Deep down, I know uh, I'm a good person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stand up and say shit when I want to, mm. yeah. not because I'd be uh, told to. Yeah. Uh, confrontation. Uh, I'll bring it if I want to. Yeah. If I don't. I'll, I'll ignore and who cares um, when time comes you know it's like anything you know you try and fight every single battle you just mm. there's no point mm. you know you do what you love and you know going for a bike ride what I yeah. say is putting the phone down yeah. dude you should see me man every like pretty much nearly every night we are uh, we got I got like four kids and we all cruising <laughs> down and we're all riding bikes we're love doing it. laps and stuff and you know once in a while I'll, I'll uh, post it Mm. And uh, but it happens every every day, every yeah. night, and that's my my comfort zone. Yeah, you know that's where I like to do. And 
same thing. You will learn this. You know, I would uh, look. I'd be surprised if you don't do another show, um, just through how much uh, people got behind you. And I think your exit was a little bit similar to mine. You know what I mean? <laughs> we it was nearly like the same game. Yeah. You know, and even when it was like when you lost it, it was like. Fuck, you know, I can imagine everyone would have been like throwing their yeah. shit, <laughs> throwing their um, broken TVs. <clears throat> yeah, they would have been, you know. It was um, they do it well, you know, because yeah. you you pick and choose these shows who you barrack for, mm. and you might, you know, at the start be like, nah, I don't like Kirby, I don't like Kirby, and now you're like, fuck yeah, she's gonna yeah. win, she's gonna win, mm. uh, and then when they when they don't, you're like, you know, so it's. As you said, it's like, I wouldn't turn it off now, you know? I don't <laughs> yeah, even care yeah. about the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but going on from, you know, here and as you move back into normal life, you, you know, you're going to be asked to be ambassadors. You're going to be asked to do charity. You're going to ask to do this and do that. Uh, definitely over the first two years, I, I'm a yes man. Yeah, 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 I'll do this, I'll yeah. do that. Um, yeah, I got, I got a bit burnt out. Uh, after two years, yeah. I, was like, I, ha- I had to say no, no, no. You know, it's more like the fact is, it's just you know, it's a bit. Oh fuck it's yeah, it's a bit when you you're getting pulled in a thousand directions. You know, I think yeah. sometimes saying no is actually saying yes. Mm. You know, like saying yes to yourself. Yeah, you look it, after you first, a hundred percent, and everything else sort of falls into place. But I think <coughs> the biggest thing staying in this is staying true to yourself, right? So. You become a reflection of your kids and your family and mm. all that. Like, you're you and keep that, you know, charisma that you have. Like, why change it just because no, of exactly. perception of society? Like, it, it yeah. doesn't work like that. At the start of doing this podcast, it was real hard because <coughs> you'd hide bits of yourself. You'd be like, oh, you know, the world doesn't need to know this. You <laughs> yeah. know? And it's well, not the world. It's, <laughs> a, you know, at the start, it was like a fucking hundred people listening. So, but it was still enough for you to go, I don't know. I don't know if I want them to know. Um and then you slowly become more and more open and honest. And then you find people don't care. And if anything, no. people resonate yeah. with the type of person you are. And or if anything, the people that you didn't really want to hang around with it anymore because yeah. they didn't think the same as you end up going, I don't want to hang around with you because you think like that or feel like this or whatever. Yeah. And it ends up just creating this much more refined, better relationships that you have with people around you i think do, do you feel like that people um they don't care because they have their own layers and layers on mm, yeah. whatever that journey is i feel like we we suppress so much about ourselves that yeah. we then you know have this opinion about people whereas we're actually more relatable than we realize 100 percent. it's well, for like adversity wh- for whatever yeah. reason the <coughs> the the narrative around what you should be yeah. Is like everyone thinks I need to be this. And then they, it's deep down they go, I'm not. Yeah. I've got these we're, secret we're, little. We're, I'll, 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 I'm a, I'll, like, I'm like, I'm a spiritual sort of person, for, me, for example, me. And yeah. I'm like, for me to say that out loud and my mates, my footy mates yeah. might go, oh, fuck. But then I say it and then you get a couple of them come up and you go, mate, I actually feel exactly the same. And yeah. you didn't realize that there were going to be friends that like that. And yeah. it's, uh, but that's just, that's just my personal experience. But, Everyone is the same. Like, if you were to just, you know, really be the most authentic version of yourself yeah. constantly all the time, you're only going to refine your, your people will come exactly, yeah, and yeah. it's just going to be better for you in the yeah. end. And um, and that could be you might be an asshole, you might like <laughs> being a prick, but you'll get like I'll get all a heap of mates <laughs> around me that like <laughs> yeah. being pricks. I don't know what it is, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you you create the environment of the people that you want to hang around with by being more honest and open. Yep. Yeah. Where's um? So what do you reckon now? So if mm. they, uh, you know, everyone talks about another season Survivor. You know, there was a a little while ago when I was on it, they asked me to go back like six weeks after. Yeah, How right. much time would you need off? Would you run it back right now? Have you put all your weight back on, or where are you sitting? <laughs> you know. Well, I'm re- I'm ready to yeah trim down again yeah. and be back in that sexy <laughs> line. <but laughs> um. I probably wouldn't go straight back. Yeah, I, I feel like turnaround's tough, eh? Yeah, all, yeah, that, and you also don't want to be in people's faces too, totally. because that's not that's not me. Mm. Um, I went on for that genuine experience, and now I know I've learned so much about sort of the gameplay mm. and what this game is about, because I genuinely knew nothing. I mm. went in and just read people. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would definitely go back. 
Yeah, it just depends. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what will pull me straight away, or if if I just sit back and wait. Yeah, sit that's back. that's probably the better way to do it because you you've got adrenaline, you've got a whole lot of things you're trying to deal with, mm. people pulling you all different directions. You sit back, get quiet with yourself, and go, "What do I want?" Yeah, are, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you well, still no. in the coaching space? No. So when I um, when I got told that I was going on the show, I called the club and I said, "You know, this opportunity, I can't yeah. say no. Like mm. it's you know, it's amazing." Yeah. And they pretty much cancelled my contract then and there. Oh, and I was fuck like, them. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is wild what? because, you know, like mm. now they can say, oh, oh we supported Kirby yeah, on this yeah. journey. Like, yeah. great, empowering yeah, yeah, women. Yeah. Or like, all these all yeah. these things. So, Oh, so they put someone else in now? I don't know. I, I haven't paid attention. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we break up. I'm going to give them <laughs> I'm going to give them a bad review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So what's uh, – do you still have your van? Mm-hmm. True, a bit of travelling or what? What van? So van life? You, is that something? You no, no, no. So I, um, it was my mum's van. So when the kids all came to live with us, mm. I, uh, they started to reduce as they got older. They moved out and whatever mm. else. So I bought her a car and then I took the van and just stripped it. Yeah. So there's a queen size bed in yeah, there, yeah, fridge yeah. and everything, everything yeah, that I need except for air conditioning. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, except for aircon. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing the worse. Man that does nothing. Oh, oh yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. If there's any auto electricians out there that yeah. are on the east coast that want to fit yeah, a nice yeah, little yeah. aircon, <laughs> you know, give me a shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at <laughs> no. what, so. What is, what's it, what's that look like? It's, you just cruise around and no, yeah. So I went on the show and then got back into a, a rental. But I want to buy a house. So I hate wasting yeah. money on other people's homes. And yeah. I'll do that. Uh, sell the van. Try and get Izuzu on board. Um, yeah. I hear Mark selling his car, so uh-huh. I want to... Is he selling it? That's awkward. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> Give it to me, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, just working uh, at a on a big project mm. in a procurement role. So, just just doing my yeah, thing, yeah. like doing taking thing. it easy. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess uh, when it comes to uh, Survivor... And the mental resilience and, and the things you build up through that whole time. How do you think you're going to use that going forward? Um, do you think, is it one of those situations where you use it as a perspective like, oh, I've been without food for whatever, I, you know, I've done these tough things, I can do anything. Is that uh, You can use that in the workforce or you can use that with <laughs> sport. Like yeah, um, yeah. where does it go from there? I think a lot of my upbringing, I, that sort of was me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, not we weren't. <coughs> You know that yeah. that poor, but we had our challenges. Mm. Um, you know, around money and food and everything else. But it just is what it is, mm. and I am grateful and humbled for that experience because it sort of grounded me again, but allowed me to be my best self. Mm. Um, so when it comes to you know what I'm going to do next, women domestic violence, like I'm a huge advocate for that, and then suicide and suicide prevention, especially for the brothers, like it's a hard space to be in and mm. it's challenging to be able to talk to that. Mm. So, yeah, get her on board. I, I want to do things that align with who I am. Mm. Yeah, that was um, pretty much the same. When we <coughs> left, We um, it's the same thing. It's like what space do you want to go into because obviously you still need to pay bills, you still need to work, mm. have whatever. If you've got hobbies, some people start their own businesses, whatever. Um, <clears throat> there's definitely some good spaces that you can kind of move into mm. um, and use your profile um, or even just something like this. You know, people can take a lot from it. 100%. Um, you know, the amount of messages we get from, like, even if it's just one, that one person go, I got so much out of this. I needed to hear that today. Yeah, it's, which it's going back to you don't know what's going to connect with the person, right? So yeah. if we don't put it on the table, then who knows what that looks like and what people are going to be drawn to. 100%. Yeah. Is there anyone, um, so, you know, the footy space now, you're out of it. Obviously, while you're in it, is that, was there anyone that was like, that you think that was going to be the next big star? Because is anyone that's uh, <laughs> anyone that you know that's like, mm. yeah, these, these are going to be... Yeah, some now, people to watch out for. Yeah, and I, I, um, I've always been a fan of Bonnie Too Good. She, she was a kid when she first came onto the scene. I think she would have been maybe nineteen. But netball background just has this natural instinct, and now she's a captain of the club that she's at. I, I, yeah, I just think that she's going to be one of the best players. I'm, I'm interested from, uh, from an AFLW perspective. Uh, obviously, we're seeing it now. The kids are getting. 
the, they're getting football from a younger age. So we're going to yeah. see the, the talent pool just grow and grow and grow and get better and better and better. But from the very start, it was, you know, you've just, you're a perfect example. Let's pull someone who's a professional netballer and put them into the AFL system because they're a good athlete or a pole, yeah. pole vaulter or <laughs> fucking basketballer. Yeah, um, didn't have enough of a pool. Now we have it. Yep. I see it growing and getting better and better every year. But what was it like at the start to be in a professional system knowing that you you aren't AFL players and you aren't uh, you haven't grown up with that sport? What, what is it like um, trying to sometimes teach players, the, the I guess, to understand ball, reading the play? All of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that like? Well, just before the AFL W came in, we had Western Bulldogs and Melbourne inaugural games, right? So we had that for four or five years. So I was with Melbourne the entire time. Mm-hmm. But that's where the footballers were and the footy brains understood the patterns and running patterns and positioning and everything else. So yeah. that looked like we were elite. Mm. But then we go into AFLW and it becomes this watered down version of that. Uh, yeah. So then you as an audience kind of – you're watching like, – it's a length of a netball game. Mm. Then they made it 15-minute quarters. Mm. We were always playing 20 to 25-minute quarters. Mm. Um, we played football for what it actually was, so 18 aside, and it became 16 aside. So you just, I felt like it lost the value of the game for mm. what it is and what we know it to be. Mm. Um, but you're right, you, you watch it today, and your daughters can go and play and be footballers mm. from, yeah. you know, the moment from they're in Oscar. nappies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Which t- is exciting because now they. They're, yeah, they're you know, built they're no footy. Yeah, well, yeah, and you yeah. can see in probably five to ten years that standard is going to be. You get got these these young girls who've played since they're five, six years old. Yeah, and they're coming in and they're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and then getting bigger and stronger yeah. and just better game sense. That is going to improve the 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 quality of the game. Yeah, uh, it's going to improve the amount of money that's going into the game. It's going to improve a lot of things. So it's one of those. Uh, I know the, the AFL wanted to just fucking chuck it in and get it going straight away. I think it was a mistake. I think they should have kept with the like the state leagues for yeah. a, for a few like for maybe five yeah. years first, and then bang, get the actual AFLW going. No, I agree with you. But uh, that's just like. That's I understand any sort of action forward is is good in that regard, but um, I think that's how they probably should have addressed it. I think they with. jumped the gun because the soccer came out and they they were big, and the netball were paying big money as well, and AFL didn't want to be left behind. I think they jumped two years ahead, mm. so yeah, they yeah. were actually sort of doing that. Even and then, two or three years oh, extra of state football yeah. and state league just to d- in, exactly, yeah. and then your first season of AFLW is. At least a little more refined. It's yeah. not this diluted version of what you just said. Yeah, yeah. 100% agree. It's still learning how to kick while we're playing AFLW. That's insane. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever play with Abby and, um, or uh, Mo or anything? Like, yeah, I, I played against them. Oh, so did you? Yeah. Smash them or what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fed them. Absolutely fed them every day. <laughs> I, I first crossed paths with Mo um, when she was playing Western Bulldogs. So okay. I was playing Melbourne. Yeah, so she's okay. a young kid, very talented. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't around. really know a lot about her. So yeah. different positions as well. She's four dollars a mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. yeah. Well, anything uh, you want to plug before we finish up? Uh, nothing you want to. It's always good seeing you, Curbs. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so you're much for having me too. Oh, mate, Pleasure. not a Making stress. The time. Yeah. Nah, easy, mate. <laughs> fucking. Yeah. Uh, Toki fucking gave us a yell and I was like, yeah, whatever, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we might have a short notice. I was, <laughs> yeah, as I said, I was like, well, we were going to talk about the survivor, do a bit of deep dive. I was like, let's just have a yarn. Have you know? Yeah, exactly. You Hard yarns are good yarns. Um, yeah, yeah, bloody yep. oath. So, um, anything you want to plug? Uh, oh, who, me? Yeah. Oh, shit. What do I want to plug? Uh, nothing. I'm actually just chilling lately. Uh, it's been pretty good, to be honest. Real estate? Uh, you still yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. doing real estate. Yeah, moved agencies. I was just yeah. saying. I'm. Uh, it's nice to get dressed up. I you know, yeah. sold a few this Looks year. Sharp. Good yeah. man. Not, not high vis anymore, like the mines, yeah, like we used to. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're big, big TV stars oh, these yeah. days, you know, <laughs> big survivor stars, you know. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, I got nothing to plug. I'm doing some stand up comedy next month, uh, April 17th. Yeah. April 17th. Um, I'm just going to start getting back into it. I've had a bit of a time off after the trip, but yeah, that's it, really. So. Aside from that, thanks so much thanks for coming for listening, on. Thank guys you. And Curbs, yeah. much love. Bloody awesome. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>